So yes, I will talk about uh, Inspector Gadget on Trust Loop, and, um, in a, it's a collection of BPF debugging tools for Kubernetes. Um, as you mentioned, my name is Alban, I live in Berlin, and I'm a CTO at Kinfolk. Um, at Kinfolk, we uh, do different things. We work a lot on Kubernetes, we have our Kubernetes distribution. Uh, we work on uh, low-level Linux technologies. Uh, we do consulting there as well, and we have a Linux um, distribution called Flatcar Container Linux. And we work with uh, several um, customers uh, in the industry. And we have an open source business model. Um, so in this talk, I will talk about uh, stress on Kubernetes and BPF a bit all together. Um, first, uh, the main focus is uh, Trace Loop. Trace Loop is a tool a bit, simil a bit similar to Stress. So it's about tracing system calls, uh, but it's done in a bit different way than uh, Stress. It is done with uh, using C groups on BPF and over white table in buffer. That's a CLI tool uh, that you can use on the command line. On top of that, uh, there is Insp Inspector Gadget that utilizes Trace Loop on the Kubernetes level in order to uh, offer a good um, user experience for Kubernetes users. So um, I mentioned this use BPF, so I will do a short introduction about uh, BPF, how it works. Uh, I don't go into too much details, but basically uh, BPF is a kind of mini virtual machine that runs in the Linux kernel. Um, so usually you write your BPF program in C, you compile it in, uh, in the BPF bytecode, so it has a specific bytecode, it's a specific uh, pseudo architecture. Uh, you can compile it with CLang and LVM. And once you have this uh, BPF bytecode, you can upload that code in the kernel using the BPF system call. And then the uh, kernel will have this uh, BPF program. It will not be executed yet. Um, first, the kernel will uh, use uh, what is called a BPF verifier. It will uh, check that the program doesn't do anything bad. So since it's run in the kernel, it will be quite dangerous if it will have access to everything and bypass security mechanism or crash the kernel. Uh, to avoid any of that, the BPF verifier will check that the program doesn't do loops or access, uh, forbidden access to memory or this kind of thing. Once it's verified, the BPF program uh, can be attached to some of the kernel subsystem. One example of that is um, kernel functions with kprops. So every time a kernel function is executed, you can execute a, a BPF program or syscalls or network packets. And there is different kind of triggers that can execute your BPF program. Uh, your BPF program can use some facilities from the kernel, uh, BPF helper function. So it can use some um, um, helper function for or high, high level high level programming. And uh, it can use something called BPF maps. BPF maps is a, it's kind of a global variable uh, that is accessible from user space uh, using the BPF system call, or it's accessible as well from your BPF program through uh, some BPF uh, helper function. Um, so that's kind of the big picture here about BPF. I will not go in more details about that, and I will uh, give more uh, practical usage about Inspector Gadget. Um, so the use case I focused on is uh, the stress user experience. As a developer, I really like to use a stress uh, to debug my application when something crash, uh, because I like to see the system calls uh, to see what it's doing. Uh, stress as a uh, problem on Kubernetes is like, uh, it's not really possible to use a stress for all your processes, all your ports on Kubernetes all the time in production, because that would be too slow and that will just not work. Um, and one annoying use case for me is uh, sometimes something crash uh, um, in Kubernetes, but then the process is not there anymore because it has crashed. So it's not possible to attach stress on it anymore. It's too late for that. And um, with another possible crashes, it's difficult to know in advance what's going to crash and attach uh, stress on it. So the alternative idea here is to use uh, uh, the idea of flight recorder. What it does, it's, it records with BPF all the system calls done by all the processes in all the pods on Kubernetes. 
and uh, this um, list of system calls are not uh, saved anywhere. They are just recorded in a ring buffer. And then ring buffer will stay in memory, uh, will not be read by anyone unless the user explicitly asks for it uh, for debugging something. So in this way, when an application crash, a pod crash on Kubernetes, you can uh, look in that ring buffer and see what has been done in the last few uh, system calls. Um, here I compare uh, stress and stress loop. That does similar things, but it's done differently. Um, stress uses uh, P-Tress uh, mechanism to capture the system calls, and stress loop uses BPF on stress points. So there is uh, in the next in the next funnel, uh, stress point defined statically for uh, in different places, and one of the places uh, about is called sysenter. It's executed every time uh, sys a system call is executed on Linux. So um, stress loop will put a BPF program on that. The granularity of stress on stress loop is different. For um, stress, you trace one process or several process, processes. Uh, for stress loop, um, I um, developed stress loop to uh, focus on C groups. So with C groups, you can filter um, one uh, or several pods or containers. Uh, stress is usually slow, uh, but it's uh, still a good tool because it's synchronous and cannot lose events. Uh, when you check the stress output, you necessarily see everything. And stress loop uh, is fast, um, but uh, it, has, uh, it works in an asynchronous way. When the ring buffer is full, you can lose events. And uh, in some weird cases, uh, it might fail to read some uh, buffers. Uh, but that's still a good, um, good enough to help us debug our application in a lot of cases. Uh, so if I go a, a bit more into the details of the PPF program on the, the top left of the screen, uh, I have a PPF program on the transparency center. And the first thing it does, it looks at the C group to uh, distinguish which pod or which container it is on Kubernetes. Then, depending on the C group, it will redirect the execution to a different BPF program that will save the system calls in uh, one ring buffer. So there is one ring buffer for each pod or for each container, and uh, the ring buffer is configured to be overwritable. Uh, that means when the buffer is full, it's overwrite the previous data that is there. And it write there continuously uh, until um, the user asks to debug that application, that pod, and they will read the ring buffer there. Okay, so now it's time for a demo. So I will go to the terminal, and first I will show stress loop. I will show it on a command line, so it's not related to Kubernetes, it's just my Linux laptop here. I will um, run this command here. So what I ask uh, to do is to run a stress loop and to trace this um, C group. Uh, as you might notice, that's um, C group created by systemd because I run SSHD as a systemd service. And now it's uh, start to um, record all the system calls uh, done by the processes inside that systemd service. In a different terminal, I will do some SSH. So I'll type SSH localhost. Now SSHD did some something. Uh, I still don't see anything because uh, so far it has recorded the events, the system calls from SSHD in a ring buffer, but nobody is reading that ring buffer. Until I press Control C, and here it dumps the last few uh, system calls. So I see there's some uh, closed system call, read system calls, and so on. Okay, that was my first demo about um, um, thrust loop. I will show uh, how stress loop can be used for uh, debugging for a debugging session using systemd. So I use systemd run to create a systemd um, unit. And here I get a shell, a new shell, uh, where um, I am inside that systemd unit. In a different terminal, I will ask to uh, trace everything that happened in that systemd unit. So, um, So now it's recording everything. I go back to the first cell and I will run some commands. And uh, when I'm finished that, I can stop 
uh, trust loop, and it will print the last system calls. So I see bash, I see the BC program that I executed in my terminal, and, and so on. So in this way, I can see that the BC program read some commands from the uh, terminal and write the result, and so on. Uh, that's a good way to uh, test uh, my application is to run them in a different system they need and check uh, what is doing like that. Okay, let me go back to my slides. Uh, now that was an example on uh, the command line, but I want to adapt that to the Kubernetes world. So to do that, uh, we want different things. We want to focus on the pods. We don't want to focus on specific process IDs or specific nodes. Uh, and we want to use Kubernetes native concepts like uh, labels to address different pods by labels, uh, not by PID and uh, node. And the user experience should be something close to kubectl. So I don't want developers to uh, run SSH to connect to a node or to manually deploy pods on kubectl exec to, for each tracing. That should be something that should be um, offered to developers so they have a kubectl-like experience. Um, so there are already some tools doing that. So for different BPF uh, Linux tracing tools uh, that I mentioned on the left of the screen, there is uh, kubectl trace and inspector gadget that are two projects that are quite similar. And they both use a project on the left to, uh, to expose them on a Kubernetes level. So BPF trace, for example, uh, if you want to use that on Kubernetes, you can use kubectl trace. Uh, the different um, BPF compiler collection tools, BCC, uh, if you want to use that on the Kubernetes, uh, uh, Inspector Gadget actually reuse a lot of them there. Inspector Gadget use BCC, uh, Trace Loop, and some others that I uh, might mention later. In a, for example, WaveWorks TCP Tracer BPF is um, something that is useful to uh, make network policies with Inspector Gadget. Um, how it works, so I mentioned that I don't want developer to SSH on nodes, so it, it's inspector gadget is a CLI command that I run on my laptop, and it will, don't, it will not SSH on nodes, but it will use Kubernetes native objects like uh, create a demand set or create a pod or a config map and so on. Uh, so it only talks to the Kubernetes API server, and from there, uh, some pods will be deployed where to run the VBF program. Uh, for example, the trace loop uh, process will run in a pod, in a so-called gadget pod, and will be uh, installing a BPF program in the kernel. Uh, let me do a demo of trace loop with Inspector Gadget. So this time uh, on the um, uh, uh, Kubernetes level. So here I have uh, um, Kubernetes um, cluster that are uh, pre-configured. It does some uh, the inspector gadget pods running on the kube system thing, for example. And what I will do, I will deploy a, a new pod. So I run this kubectl run command to deploy uh, something. Uh, this is just a shell script which is uh, buggy, so it doesn't do uh, anything useful here. But let's say uh, it crashed and I delete it. Uh, but trace loop still notices that the pod was created and it is able to uh, notice um, that uh, I have a few traces, uh, including a trace which was deleted 17 seconds ago. So that's the pod that I just created. And now if I want to see what happened in, in that command, in that pod, I will try to find uh, this one. And I, will, I can show the system calls uh, in that um, in that pod. So here I see that uh, that pod has executed some uh, read and write system calls and so on. Uh, let me go back to the inspector gadget uh, command. So inspector gadget uh, can be called uh, on a shell like this, or it can be executed as a um, kubectl plugin, like JIT as well. That's the same thing. And Inspector Gadget is a collection of gadgets. Uh, one of them is Trace Loop, but there are others um, that expose tools from BCC and so on. 
Okay. Um, so as I mentioned, there are other gadgets in Inspector Gadgets. Um, so here are a few of them, uh, network releases to help you to write network releases, some tools to debug TCP connections, um, some tools to see what kind of processes are created or what kind of files are open, or what kind of uh, TCP um, ports are open, and so on. Um, here I mentioned some different um, Linux and Kubernetes distributions. So uh, Inspector Gadget, um, the goal is to make it work on a, as a broad as possible Kubernetes uh, distributions. Um, in my work, I focused uh, uh, first on Flatcar container Linux on locomotive because that are the Linux and Kubernetes distribution that um, we do at Kinfolk. Uh, but there is, uh, it sometimes uses some very recent kernel features that are only available in recent versions. That's why it doesn't work everywhere. Uh, but of course, I welcome um, uh, contributions to make it work as well as uh, any open source project. Um, some example of use case, what you can do with different um, uh, gadgets, inspector gadget. Uh, there is some that uh, allows you to debug your application, like Trace Loop or Open Snoop, uh, XX Snoop, etc. Some help you to write uh, network policies, like the network policy advisor uh, gadget. And uh, some are in progress, but is, they are not uh, ready to use uh, completely. Uh, help you to write um, uh, pod security policies with the right uh, capabilities in your pods. Um, so let me demo exec snoop on open snoop. So um, I will start a pod called cooking that does uh, some, uh, some command here. Um, I know that's kind of anti-pattern to do curl pipe, pipe bash, but uh, for the purpose of this demo, I will run this anyway. But before that, I will uh, start this command with exec snoop. Here I uh, specify which pod I want to, um, to trace. In this case, uh, just this one that I will create in a moment. So in a different terminal, I will execute this one. So while it's executing, I can see everything that happened in that pod, uh, including the pseudo uh, pause Docker container um, that might be an internal detail of how uh, Kubernetes and Docker works together. And here I see every new process that is created um, from the shell script, from this install shell script. I can see what he's doing and uh, debug things that way. Um, okay, let me stop that. And um, uh, I can also do the same thing with open snoop. Uh, if, uh, okay, my pod has finished already, so it's too late, but otherwise it will show all the uh, files that are being opened by the different processes in that pod. Okay. Uh, another thing that I would like to show is um, uh, this label uh, command. So to select um, a pod before I use pod name, but I can filter the pods uh, by label as well. So here I use uh, this. I want only the pods with the label uh, role demo on my app app one. Uh, there is currently no such uh, pod here, as you can see, uh, if I do, show labels, you, you can see there is nothing there. Uh, so I will deploy uh, new pods. And now you will see that uh, now there are new pods being created. And in real time, I can see the new, uh, yeah, the new processes that are created in uh, all the pods that match this level. Um, so now I will introduce a uh, gadget tracer manager. That's kind of a view in, into the architecture of Inspector Gadget to show you a bit how it works. Um, the goal of this is to implement um, this uh, label selector. Uh, here you can see there is different way to select pods. I can uh, use one or several of them. I can select by label, namespace, pod name, node, or container index. Container index is useful when you have several pods in the, sorry, several containers in the same pod, pod 
then you have uh, index zero, one, two, and so on. But usually that's only zero. Uh, so to implement this label, uh, that's kind of a bit difficult because when um, when a new pod starts, uh, it doesn't. Um, the BPF program has to know uh, if the system calls belong to a pod with this label or not. So it needs to have some kind of uh, knowledge about labels. So it works. Um, you need to work with several pods. So you could have a, a tracer. For example, open Snoop, which needs to trace two different pods, or another tracer may run at the same time with another pod. And uh, pods can come and go; they can be created and destroyed um, automatically, and so on. So I have a gadget tracer manager, which is a demand uh, implementing a gRPC interface, and you can tell it uh, it has new uh, tracer or new container. Uh, it has gRPC method to uh, to help it uh, keep track of what's happening. Uh, to know about new containers and new pods, uh, I use uh, the OCI hooks, uh, pre-start and post-start. So if you know about uh, RunC on Docker, uh, RunC implement uh, OCI hooks. Every time there is a new container being started, it can execute a script, uh, the pre-start script, or when the container is destroyed, the post-start script. And the gadget tracer manager know about new uh, tracers, new gadget being executed because when an inspector gadget runs something, uh, internally it does kubectl exec. I don't mean the command kubectl exec, but the API call on a Kubernetes uh, API server to do to execute something. It will execute something on the gadget pods, and internally it will run this BCC wrapper uh, script that will uh, tell the gadget tracer manager that there is a new tracer. Or, that one disappears. So the gadget tracer manager match this information, the different labels from containers and the labels requested by the uh, inspector gadget. And it will update PPF maps. Uh, I mentioned that it was some kind of global variable on the system to know that, okay, this tracer need to trace this specific containers. And then when uh, inspector gadget will execute a specific uh, tracer, um, in the BPF program, it can uh, look at the BPF map to know whether this system call belongs to a pod that should be traced or not. Um, so it uses this uh, BPF helper function called get currency group ID to know the currency group ID of the, um, the system call being traced. And if it belongs to a pod uh, that should be traced, then it continues, or if not, it stops tracing. Uh, now, if I have some time, I can uh, show you a bit about the network policy advisor too. I think I have a few minutes still. Uh, so the use case is uh, kind of implementing security as a natural thought. Uh, quite often there is um, a project on Kubernetes, uh, an application uh, that is a microservice application and it has a lot of deployment, a lot of services, but it doesn't have any um, uh, network policies implemented. And then we have the idea, okay, we want to implement some security, some uh, firewall on this system. So we want to add network policies. But sometimes the developer that joined the project doesn't have any knowledge of the architecture of the application. So it's kind of difficult to write network policies when you don't know, okay, is this pod supposed to talk to this pod or not? Um, so that's kind of the use case here. And um, I will take this application as a demo. Uh, as an example here, you can see there is a lot of different pods and they all talk with different methods, HTTP, gRPC, and so on. But if you don't have the detailed knowledge about that, it's difficult to write network policies. Um, this example is hosted here on GitHub. And in the YAML deployment file, there is a lot of deployments and services, but I didn't see any network policies here. So um, I want to use Inspector Gadget's network policy advisor to uh, be able to write network policies here. The way it works, uh, use uh, Inspector Gadget with a network policy gadget and ask to monitor this specific namespace. So I can specify one or several namespace to monitor and then it will write uh, in the file um, the output. So it store one line per new TCP connection on this namespace. And that's a file that will be 
can I, I can use later to create network policies. So once I start uh, the inspector gadget command, I can uh, deploy um, my application in the demo namespace and it will create pods and so on and pods will talk with, with each other and then inspector gadget will notice that uh, they talk to each other and they, um, it can um, monitor that. And uh, when it does uh, in that communication, I can stop the first inspector gadget command and I can use this network trace uh, log file as an input uh, for inspector gadget to create the report. So in this way, it will create a network policy YAML, which is a list of network policies with, uh, for the different pods. Um, as an example, here is an example of um, network policy created in this way. So in this example, it, is, it creates a network policy called Court Service Network, and it knows uh, it's about the pods called um, Card Service, and it uh, allows traffic from the front end on this port and so on. That's because it has detected that the front end connect to um, this card service. So uh, it has an idea of the network traffic and generate appropriate network policies there. Um, of course, that's not something to apply blindly. You still need to review to know if it makes sense or not. But I find it a lot more useful, um, a lot easier to generate those and review them than writing network policies from scratch uh, by, uh, because I will have to know which part it's using and so on. Um, if you want to contribute to Inspector Gadget, um, first you can join the Kubernetes Slack channel Inspector Gadget um, and chat uh, there. Um, although I created some uh, issues on GitHub with a good first issue label, there are issues that are either are a bit easier to write or there are issues that um, I can provide guidance how to, how to do that. Uh, so please join on the Kubernetes uh, channel if you are interested on the chat here. Um, thank you, that's the end of my talk and I can take questions if you have any. And if you want the slides, I have the link uh, to the slide at the bottom of the slide. Thank you so much, Alban. This was fascinating. Um, can you talk a little bit about the roadmap for these tools, uh, what we can expect in the future? Um, yes, so I don't have a precise roadmap. I have some ideas of things I would like to do. Um, I, um, there is a, uh, let me go to, to the BCC website actually. There is a few, um, BCC tools, uh, some of them I will um, in the process of adding them into Inspector Gadget. Uh, so if you don't know the BCC uh, repository, that's really useful to learn about BPF because they have a lot of tools uh, about to trace uh, different aspects of the Linux kernel. And uh, one of them I like is called Profile. So I can show you here. Uh, what it does is to uh, record uh, at a specific frequency the stacks, kernel stack that happens. So it gives you an idea of what the CPU is doing. And I use that to um, debug performance issue on, uh, on Kubernetes. And that's something that I want to add in Inspector Gadget to help uh, debug performance issues. Another thing I would like to do is um, integration within open telemetry on uh, Inspector Gadget to uh, get distributed trace uh, from open telemetry. Um, otherwise, I, um, I would like to have um, uprop support. So that's to trace not kernel function as I showed a bit before, but to trace a function in your code, in your Go code or Perl code or Ruby and so on. So, so basically you're slowly migrating the local BPF tool, ch tool chain into Kubernetes compatible uh, BPF tool chain. Uh, yes, so mostly Inspector Gadget doesn't have BPF code of its own. It, uh, it uh, takes the help from BCC and other external projects uh, to, to, it kind of sits on the shoulder of other giants to, to make it work on Kubernetes.